It's been one year since the Garage 56 Camaro started the 24 hours of Le Mans, and honestly, I think we should go back. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Yeah, one year ago today, the 24 hours of Le Mans started and the Garage 56 Camaro captured the hearts of, well, seemingly everybody. It united motorsport fans in the United States and everybody got behind this program and everyone was super interested to hear and see how it was doing. I mean, heck, even the Europeans got behind this car because at the end of the day, a pushrod V8 thundering around the Circuit de la Sarthe is absolutely captivating. It had people craning their necks to take a look at it. I mean, even when the car showed up for scrutineering, it attracted the biggest crowd out there. The pit crew walking down the pit lane, just their massive sheer size alone caught everyone's attention. I mean, they're ex-NFL and ex-college football players. The French just have not seen people of that size in a long time. I mean, heck, they haven't even heard a car scream down the French countryside like that since Dale landed on the beaches of Normandy back in 44. So when the Camaro showed up, it made everybody turn their head and pay attention. And it was a super interesting program. Basically, the combination of nearly two years worth of work between Hendrick Motorsports, Chevrolet, NASCAR, and IMSA helped make Jim France's vision come true of taking a NASCAR Cup car back to the Circuit de la Sarthe to run the 24 hours of Le Mans. And honestly, it was absolutely phenomenal. I wouldn't change anything except for maybe not using a British gearbox, which of course failed in the 20th hour, but the car still managed to fin the, finish the race, 285 laps, 2,413 miles down, and finished 39th out of 62 cars. It probably should have finished up probably around 15th-ish on the running order, and we know everybody is a stickler for the rules. Well, it wasn't in a class, so it couldn't actually be anything. It wasn't beating GT cars. It didn't do this. We get it. We know. We understand all of that. It was still just in a super fun program and it created a lot of memes to watch the Camaro blow the doors off of a GT car down the Malson straight. Again, we know it had more horsepower. Doesn't matter. It still made for a great meme of what the is a kilometer as it screamed by blaring Freebird by Leonard Skinner with bald eagles flanking it on side to side. The big boy Camaro captured the hearts of everybody and that's a good thing. At the end of the day, it was good for motorsports. Uh, everybody has clamored for this car to come back out of retirement. I mean, it ran the 24 hours with Jimmy Johnson, Jensen Button, and Mike Rockefeller behind the wheel. And it did a phenomenal job. People were like, oh, this thing's going to be a tractor. The Americans don't know how to turn left and right. They only know how to turn left. Well, it turns out they can turn both left and right and do it really well to the tune of, well, probably finishing up pretty high in the running order, barring, of course, like I said, that X-Track gearbox, the Brits, from failing. Ah, should have been an American-made gearbox at the end of the day. I mean, gearboxes fail. It happens. But it was still cool to see this entire program run. Everything about it was a fun time, right? Very rarely do I keep the onboard cameras up of a car during an entire race, let alone for 24 hours. But for the Garage 56 Camaro, one of the TVs was dedicated just to the onboard shot because, again, it was a super fun program to follow. Chad Canals, Greg Ives, and everybody over at Hendrick Motorsports that made this possible absolutely deserve a pat on the back. Hendrick Motorsports delivered a masterclass in how to run an experimental program when I think a lot of Europeans don't necessarily understand just how professional NASCAR teams are. I mean, Hendrick Motorsports shop rivals out of Formula One factories. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a massive complex, a campus as they refer to it as, and they are capable of fielding cars for literally anything if they wanted to at the end of the day. A lot of smart people working on the program as well. Since the end of the 24 hours, though, everybody has clamored to see this car come back out again. Uh, whether it will or not, I highly doubt it at this point. If you haven't seen the car, I saw it at Daytona and Indianapolis last year. It's a fantastic car to take a walk around and take a look at. If you're a nerd and you like to sort of look at race car engineering and the different things that go into it, the amount of different aero bits on it, the different steering setup that they had in the car, just a different cockpit configuration too compared to what the standard cup car currently has. All of the little tiny intricacies were just fun to look at and cool to see what the differences were. I mean, when this car showed up for scrutineering, you know, the week before the 24 hours, it captured everybody's attention. And then the first time we saw it out on track, when it's in front of that 499 from Ferrari, the GTP car, it looked absolutely ridiculous. It was so big. And then of course they had the whole field photo and it's sending in the center like a shark surrounded by a bunch of minnows. It's just an absolutely fantastic photo. I believe Jamie Price maybe had that photo. Um, either way, whoever took it, fantastic job there. 
Everything about this car was just a lot of fun, though. Uh, from the memes that we all saw online to even when it went to Goodwood for the Festival of Speed and Jensen Button just absolutely doing hellacious burnouts in the car because, well, that's what the car is built to do. It's built to put a ton of power to the rear wheels, and it's built for you to have some fun with it and it's cool to see it you know get that sort of treatment now of course there's two versions of it there was the race version and then there was the backup version and if you get to see the race version it's still grimy covered in that circuit de la sarth dirt grime oil everything that comes along with being in a 24 hour race at the end of the day though i think you know everybody wants it to go back people continue to clamor for this race to have a stock car division. And maybe it should, because it certainly spiced things up. It got the attention of Americans all over the country. Obviously, it was on Motor Trend TV, so not a ton of people could watch it. This year, it's on Max as well as Motor Trend TV, so maybe a few more people can watch. But, of course, the Garage 56 Camaro is not going to be in it. Uh, at the end of the day, it was definitely the biggest story last year coming out of that race, other than Ferrari winning. But, you know... You don't want to say the quiet part out loud, but it kind of seems like the ACO gave them a good advantage in BOP to allow them to win in their return to Le Mans, kind of like how I think Porsche is going to get it this year. But we're not going to talk about that out loud. Can't do that, you guys. For the Garage 56 Camaro, though, uh, fantastic performance. Absolute legendary program, something people continue to talk about. And Hendrick Motorsports still has the Garage 56 stuff up for sale on their website. Whether you want merch, they now have diecasts available as well that you can pre order. Not a plug, just saying if you wanted one, because I know people love this program, it's there if you want it. So hopefully they can go back sometime in the future. But for now, the Garage 56 Camaro will live on as a bit of a legend. People will be talking about that for years to come. And I think at the end of the day, the program absolutely did its job. So let me know in the comments what you thought about the entire program last year. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at BreakCardBlog.